Rugby Sevens is an exciting variant of traditional 15-a-side rugby union that is taking the world by storm. Although the majority of Sevens laws are the same as 15-a-side, there are some slight variations that contribute to the fast-flowing, entertaining nature of the sport. A Rugby Sevens team is made up of seven players, with a standard match consisting of two seven-minute halves with a one-minute half-time break. Typically games are played on a full-size rugby field. However, Rugby Sevens variations do exist, and often junior and introductory competitions are played across half a rugby field. The shortened nature of Sevens enables tournaments to be completed in one day or over one weekend, and tournament draws typically have competitions for a cup, a plate, a bowl and a shield allowing many teams of different standards to participate against like teams and enjoy competitive games. Sevens is popular at all levels and with the game now recognised as an Olympic sport, participation by males and females of all ages and abilities is at an all-time high. Winning a Rugby Sevens match requires a team to score more points than the opposition. There are numerous scoring methods in Rugby Sevens that include a try, conversion goal, penalty goal and drop kick. Try. A try is scored when an attacking player is first to ground a ball in the opponent's in goal area. It is worth five points. Conversion goal. When a player scores a try, it gives the player's team the right to attempt to score a goal by taking a kick at goal. This kick is a conversion kick and must be taken as a drop kick in rugby sevens. A conversion goal is worth two points. Conversions are often not available in crossfield sevens. Penalty goal. A player scores a penalty goal by kicking a goal from a penalty kick. It is worth three points. Dropped goal. A player scores a dropped goal by kicking a goal from a drop kick in general play. Drop kicks are not common in rugby sevens. A successful drop kick is worth three points. An understanding of law will allow players to safely enjoy playing Rugby Sevens. The following information provides a brief definition of the most significant laws. However, for a comprehensive review of all law, visit the Australian Rugby Union website at rugby.com.au. Each half of the match is started with a drop kick from the centre of the halfway line. The non-kicking team must be 10 metres back from the ball when it is kicked. All players on the kicker's team must be behind the kicker and the kick must travel 10 metres towards the opposition goal line. After points are scored, play is restarted by the scoring team with a drop kick on halfway. The same laws that apply to the kickoff apply to the restart. Open play. The ball is moved up the field via passing, running or kicking the ball. When passing, the ball must be thrown backwards and cannot travel forward towards the opposing goal line. If the ball travels forward, this is defined as a forward pass. If a player mishandles a ball and it travels forward, it is known as a knock-on. Tackle. A tackle occurs when the ball carrier is held by one or more opponents and is brought to ground. To maintain the continuity of the game, the tackler must release the tackled player and roll away. And the ball carrier must release the ball immediately after the tackle. These actions allow other teammates to come in and contest for the ball. Ruck. A ruck is formed if the ball is on the ground and one or more players from each team who are on their feet close around it. Players must enter a ruck with their hips and shoulders facing straight down the field. Players must not handle the ball in a ruck. They must use their feet to move the ball or drive over it so the ball emerges at the team's hindmost foot. From here, the ball can be picked up. Maul. A maul is not common in rugby sevens. It occurs when the ball carrier is held by one or more players from each team. The ball must be off the ground. Scrum. A scrum is a means of restarting play after a minor infringement of the law has occurred, such as a forward pass or a knock-on. In Rugby Sevens, a scrum is formed when three players from each team bind together in one row and close up with their opponents so their heads are interlocked. This creates a tunnel into which the ball can be thrown into and players in the scrum can contest to win possession. In some variations of Rugby Sevens, the scrum may be uncontested, meaning teams do not push and the team who throws the ball in must win it. Line-out. The line-out is a means of restarting play after the ball has crossed the sideline and gone into touch. 
Players from each team assemble in two lines, perpendicular to the touch line, one metre apart. The hooker throws the ball down the corridor between the two lines of the players, who either jump or are lifted and supported in the air in an attempt to win the ball. In some variations of rugby sevens, holding a player in the air is not allowed. Penalty and free kick. Infringement of the laws can result in the referee issuing a penalty or free kick to the non-offending team. At a penalty kick, teams have the option to kick a penalty goal, kick for touch, or take a tap kick. A free kick is awarded for less significant offences and teams have the option for a tap kick or a scrum. In rugby sevens, referees will often play advantage, meaning that infringements will not always be immediately penalised. By doing this, referees provide an opportunity for the non-offending team to play on and gain a result that would be better than had the penalty kick been issued. Advantage is likely to be issued more regularly in junior and introductory sevens. Opportunities for males and females of all ages to play in school and club rugby sevens are increasing by the year. To find out what opportunities are available for you, please visit your local state or territory rugby union website or visit the Australian Rugby Union Sevens website, rugby.com.au slash sevens.